my family case is basically resolved. The kids are home. There's a rumor that uh, that the grandparents or whatever have moved in with us. That rumor comes from an idea that was thrown about in the early part of the case as a way to get the children home sooner. It was an idea that was not ever something I wanted to do, but of course would have done that if it would have brought my kids home sooner. I thought it was an insane proposition. Uh, and so did the county, frankly. The county attorney and the county uh, services office were not interested in that. The judge didn't really seem interested in that. One lawyer proposed it. Uh, I never liked that lawyer. The lawyer who brought it up the first time, um, I was nonplussed and non-impressed with his non-performance. Um, it was his baby, and he's like, oh, it's a great idea. No, it was a terrible fucking idea, you weirdo. But hey, he brought it up, and so then it got bandied about back and forth. It was never really on the table as a viable option. Um, very silly thing was shot down over and over. But hey, one guy was really married to that idea. Go figure. But no, the kids are back home. They're back home full time. They're here now. They're asleep because it's bedtime. All of that. And uh, it's great. It's really nice to have them back. And to everybody who said otherwise, like, oh, Nick doesn't want his kids back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, your internet stuff is funny, but real life is real. And reality matters. And the reality of the situation is that uh, five kids were put into really a lot of bullshit. And it's built on the backs of bullshit. And that bullshit takes a long fucking time to fight and correct. Especially when your rights are abridged during the process. So that being said, that phase is over. And now we move on to the criminal phase of our case. I say phases. They're separate cases. They just run parallel. Um, but the criminal, the criminal matter is ongoing. I cannot talk about it. Let me put a little asterisk there. People can always talk about their criminal cases unless there's a gag order. When I say in this instance about my criminal case that I cannot talk about it, I certainly can. I have the ability to. I have the First Amendment right to. But it's not wise to talk about most aspects of the case. And so those aspects of the case that should not be talked about, I won't talk about. There are a couple things that through this process I have felt comfortable talking about and issuing uh, specific statements on. Usually, it's a statement about Minnesota law, like when I talked about the filing of the long-term placement plans, even though the children were not looking at long-term placement, I felt it would be useful to dispel the improper notion that they were going to be placed uh, on some permanent basis outside of the home or long-term basis outside of the home. I thought it useful to dispel that notion, educate people, say, hey, actually, Minnesota requires these timelines and things have to be filed by certain dates, even if they're not the trajectory that the case is going. So they run them parallel to what's actually going on because there's always a chance that the people on the track will fuck up and go off the track and they'll have to go with the alternate plan. And once that happens, they're up against a statutory timeline. And so they have to run them both with the hope that the one thing goes right and the fear that the backup plan will need to be used. I tried to explain that because it's a point in Minnesota law and it doesn't actually say anything specific about my case. Other stuff I've talked about is rather general. I've talked about things like what Minnesota has to prove in our criminal case. They have to prove something called possession, uh, probably constructive possession. There are elements to it. I'm not going to get into it now, but that's what they have to do. There are facts in my case that make this not the easiest thing in the world, and those facts may be brought before the court. People have consistently gotten things wrong about what's going on outside of the courtroom. I'm not always inclined to correct them, but one of them that happened early on, for example, was uh, Lady Rackets and I both posted bond at the exact same time. For whatever reason, her bond did not get filed into her case, and people thought that I posted bond and she did not, and that there was some speculation about some rift or some plan or some setup there when actually it was just a government mistake. The government has made mistakes all over this case. 
fact, some of the documents that have come out, specifically unredacted documents, are due to some level of government mistake somewhere. That's just how it is. There's a lot of things that go on in these things, in these cases, a lot of people touch them and mistakes get made all the time. I want that to be clear because people both underemphasize and overemphasize government mistakes, government malfeasance and government maliciousness. They're not all the same thing. Government makes mistakes all the time. Those errors don't always and often don't have an impact on the overall case, but the mistakes still happen. The filing, the, the lack of filing of the bond um, for Lady Rackets at the same time that mine was filed probably was not going to have any income. There's a theoretical possibility that the bond not being filed could in some way lead to like that weekend before it got corrected, uh, something happening that would look like a violation of release conditions that would then result in some sort of hearing, which would be annoying and possibly have like an arrest included, but it would be a mistake. A mistake that wasn't anybody's like particular fault, but the likelihood of that was exceedingly low. So it wasn't that big of a deal and there wasn't anything we could do to correct it because I think we posted, we posted the bond and then we found out that it hadn't been filed by Friday and over the weekend you can't like fix it. You have to wait till the next work day to do so. And when I went in to go fix it, it was already done. Like they had already fixed it. They must have known about it. I'm guessing they got inquiries. I'm not sure. But that happens. People need to get out of their heads the idea that every government mistake is going to like, is somehow impactful to the case. Some of them are just government mistakes. There are mistakes that can be very impactful to the case. We saw this with uh, Alec Baldwin's case, right? It resulted in a dismissal. Some people think the dismissal is improper. Whatever you think about the Baldwin case, a mistake was made and it was very impactful. Whether it was the right impact, wrong impact, doesn't matter. Very impactful thing. In other cases, bigger mistakes get made and they don't do anything at all to the case. So when I'm saying that uh, mistakes happen or didn't happen or whatever, people misunderstand things based on government mistakes sometimes, like that's just the nature of the game. It's not always malicious. One of the things I said not too long ago is really true. When you, when you start getting, one of the things is really true is a weird thing to say, but I'll say it. When you start getting into court cases and, uh, and how government works and the machine of it, actually, I think Josh mentioned this on the forum as something I said. He's again, trying to imply something that is more than what I said, but that doesn't, let's just do it this way. I said at one point that people overestimate what a conspiracy needs to be. It's not always a conspiracy that fucks someone over. What happens is that one government worker not doing their job well enough in one spot can cause a ton of problems, even up to and including criminal charges and stuff like that. I'm not saying that happens specifically in my case before anybody accuses me of saying that. I'm not. However, there are little mistakes that have happened in my case that have caused great consternation at other parts of the case. And those little mistakes are probably inadvertent. But the point of that is to say that the system is set up in a way in which very small mistakes from one individual can have massive impact on the life of an accused person. The reason I bring that up is only to say this system is a meat grinder and it is designed to wear you down break you down shame you and destroy you and if you don't believe that get in it sometime actually don't because it's fucking horrible but that's how the system works and just those little little laziness or laxities can lead to big problems for people that's a reality that exists people should understand that all of your rights all of the things that protect you, that's all paper, baby. <laughs> bullets have taken away a lot of rights and cops have been let off for those bullets even when the bullets fired are unjust. Obviously, no one was shot in this case. Thank Christ, no one was shot in this case. Could have happened. 
but it didn't. But those little mistakes that are forgiven all the time are why the government needs to be held to the maximum standard because they hold the power over you in a way that you cannot even compete with. Uh, Iceman says, legit question, Nick. Can you talk about the factors that allowed for a win in the custody or does that have ramifications for your criminal case? That all has to wait. That whole story has to wait. Sorry, I, it's just not proper yet. Kevin Brownell says, is there a difference between your family case being resolved and the case being dismissed? If there is, which is it? For another time, brother. For another time. You need to focus on your family, bro. Get off the internet. <laughs> All the people saying I needed to focus on my family like thought that I wasn't getting my kids back. And it's like, that, that's what I was doing this whole time. Like, I, you stream too much. It's like, I stream like once a week right now. They're like, too much. You got to spend your stream time getting your kids back. It's like, the government's closed, bro. I can't even do anything. Like, literally, there were only so many hours of the week I could be doing something. And uh, I spent a ton of it doing exactly what everybody said I wasn't doing. They're like, Nick's not even trying. It's like, fuck every day. Every single day, the focus was what can we do? What can we do? How do we do this? How do we do this? How do we do this? Oh, and by the way, when you like you, you read those transcripts and stuff and, and you see anything even implying or insinuating that we weren't doing literally fucking everything they asked all the time, That's what they do to you. That's what they do to you. You can do everything they ask perfectly and they will somehow find a way to say that you're not complying. Here's one of the interesting ways they do it. This is fun. If you don't have a lawyer who knows what they're doing, for example, this happens to people in family court cases a lot. Didn't happen to us. I want to be very clear. Didn't happen to us. We had lawyers eventually who knew what they were doing. Our first lawyers did not. They were garbage. They still are. I'll tell you the story of our garbage lawyers someday, but not yet. So here we go. This happens in family court cases all the time. The county workers will demand as part of some condition substantial improvement towards parenting goals, all right? And when you ask them what the parenting goals are, they don't have them. I know that sounds weird. I know that sounds really weird because you're like, well, they're telling you they want you to improve like on their goals. It's like, well, what are the goals? Well, we don't know. We just want you to get better at parenting. It's like, well, what does that mean? And they don't have an answer. They just want it to do better. And so people who don't have lawyers go into that and they go, oh, okay, well, it's obvious. I need to do this, this, and this. I, I need to be better at parenting. So I need to do these things that I think are better at parenting. And then that will work. And they'll work on those things and maybe they'll get better, whatever. But then the county will come and say, well, they have not made significant improvement on their parenting goals because they didn't ever define the parenting goals. And this holds up in court all the time because the county comes in and says, actually, judge, they're not making significant improvement on their parenting goals. And the person sitting there with their dick in their hands going, wait a minute, they shouldn't do that in court, but they are. And they're sitting there going, wait a minute. What was I supposed to do? I did this and this and this. And they're like, that wasn't in our parenting. Like, we didn't discuss you doing that. This is how these things work. It's the, the levers of government. Without getting into details, our first attorneys never, ever got specificity out of the expectations we had. Everything was vague. And because of that vagary, the government was able to frame a narrative out of whatever the hell they wanted. And the judge is going to defer to the government workers because judges don't have time to really like personally analyze things. They're relying on the people who do the field work. Those people bring it in. 
here's the work, judge. Here's what we've done. Here's our efforts. Here's the parents' efforts. We find them insufficient, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. At the beginning of our case, like those vague things start coming because our lawyers weren't doing anything. I got criticized for objecting in court. And it's because I was screaming at my lawyer off the mic to object. And she wouldn't. And she should have. But she didn't. Bad lawyers. Fuck you. And when your kids are on the line, man, you can't afford them. But anyway, our lawyers weren't doing anything at the beginning of the case. And so the government kept saying there were things we had to do, and they had never told us what those things were. We're like, we are trying to do everything. People make a big deal out of another thing that I mentioned in the, uh, it's in the transcripts. The day that Alicia Sweep came to my house, I had called them 10 times that morning because I wanted them to come out and inspect the house. We knew they needed to come inspect the house. I'd called them, please, please come out. I left messages. I sent, I left voicemails on her and another worker's phones, just trying to get a hold of someone. We were never served a document. We were never served a document. We didn't even know we had hearings until the day of, because they didn't give us the information. The internet had information before we did in our cases. And we're scrambling to try and figure things out, what we need to do. So I'm calling these people just desperately trying to get them on the phone. They never returned a phone call, not one time. And then they showed up at our house. People are like, well, why are you calling them 10 times? Did they have my kids? <laughs> they had my, my children. Of course I'm calling them. I want them back. I want to get them back in their home. I'm trying desperately to get the workers out to do it. And they don't. And my lawyers didn't do anything. And we got new lawyers. Our new lawyers got the government to just define what we needed to do. Well, new lawyers plus me spurging out. Once we got the government to define what they wanted from us, it was easy. But they didn't do it at first. They didn't want to. They didn't have to. They have your kids. What do you do? Beg. Please tell us what to do. Please come to our house. Please do these things. Please let us just fucking show you. But they don't return your call. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Call again. It's amazing. It's amazing. That was months. That was our life for months. You call the government constantly asking for them to tell you what you need to do. Please just tell us what you need to do. They don't tell you. Then they go into court and say they're not doing the thing. All right. Like I said, this full story is great. I'll tell it eventually. It's going to take a while because all of our cases have to be resolved. I have to be vague about it now. But I, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Even people I hate. No way. No one should have to be under the thumb of government. They don't operate reasonably. Debbie says, Aloha, Nick. Proud of you. Not that you need that from me. Thank you. I do. As a pediatric and L &D, labor and delivery nurse, I've never seen reunification this quickly. Speaks volumes about you, your character, and your strength of your family. Well, again, here's the problem. Despite, uh, despite the internet rumors, the people that they went around and talked to who actually know us, know our family, and know our kids, all said there's one thing they were 100% positive of. That the kids love their parents and the parents love the kids. We had a great relationship. Of course, that was always true. I know, again, there's a headcanon fantasy out there that like says that I don't uh, want to be around my kids or some crazy shit like that. Because I would say, people would ask me why you're not streaming. It's like, guys, I'm really fucking beat. Like, I can't. I, my schedule's not allowing it right now. We need to get through the school year before I can change things up because my schedule's crazy. They're like, Nick doesn't even want to be around his kids. No, it's, if I didn't want to be around my kids, I would just have streamed or something instead of being around them. But um, it's like, no, like that's just, that was just a reality. And people made that into something else. But when you get down to the actual people who actually know us, you find, yeah, everybody, everybody seems to think you guys have a great relationship with your kids and they really love you and you really love them and you're really involved. It's like, yes, yes. 
Very much so. Shocker. All right, here we go. Uh, Buckmaster says, Nick, you will tell us everything eventually, just like people get the 5K gift and you will do anything else you promise. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Again, huge news for me and my family. And um, it's one step closer to the end. No, it's one step closer to being kind of back on track and back to normalcy. Um, I'm not over. I've got a ways to go on the criminal case. Uh, and I can't tell you about what's coming in it other than like what's like, I got a hearing at whatever time. Like that's uh, those things are kind of out there. I can't talk to you about the specifics of the case because they have to be brought in very specific ways. But, um, you know, anyway, to everybody out there who uh, supports me, thank you so much to everybody out there who doesn't. That's cool, man. I told you from the beginning, um, nobody has any reason to believe me and I can't, I can't counter narratives by talking because I, I really, restrained on what I am able to say reasonably without damaging my case. And so I have to accept the fact that people may not believe me um, and may not like me for a while. I'm sorry. That's okay though. I forgive every, like I forgive everybody. There's nothing, there's nothing to forgive. You get to make the decisions about uh, people based on what you can see and you get one side of the story. And unfortunately it's not mine. One day when I get to tell this story, even if everything I say comports exactly with what happens, I don't think you're going to believe some of it. But it's a damn good story. And I think you'll like hearing it. Sometimes it sucks when your life is on display for people, but it is what it is. So at least... At least I hope the show is uh, is something that you can get meaning for. Like I legitimately mean this, meaning for out of your life. Um, I've learned a lot from from what we've been going through, and um, people are going to take that statement in a very different way than I mean it. It's not a happy learning. Uh, there's real fucking heartbreak in our story, and it's not from anywhere that you guys will have any ability to know right now. I, I guarantee you, none of you know what I'm talking about as I say this, but one day you probably will because I'll finally get to talk about it. 